Exodus chapter 30, verse 17 to 21 is our text. Exodus chapter 30, verse 17 to 21 is our text. Exodus 30, 17 to 21. We're in the series of God's Tabernacle in Me, and we're studying the tabernacle uh, with the lens from the New Testament, right? Uh, With the lens of the New Testament. And the Lord is building a a tabernacle, his temple within us. And in 1 Corinthians 3.16, we know, God says, don't you know that uh, you are the temple uh, where the Spirit dwells? That we uh, ourselves, the Lord dwells in us. And he tabernacles in us. And so understanding uh, the Old Testament through the New is very, very important. So we have a a broader aspect of understanding God's word. Exodus chapter 30. If you have found it, please say Christ-likeness. And would you rise with me as I read God's word this morning? Then the Lord said to Moses, make a bronze basin with its bronze stand for washing. Place it between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it. Aaron and his sons are to wash their hands and feet with water from it. Whenever they enter the tent of meeting, they shall wash with water so that they will not die. Also, when they approach the altar to minister by presenting an offering made to the Lord by fire, they shall wash their hands and feet so that they will not die. This is to be a lasting ordinance for Aaron and his descendants for the generations to come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may take a seat. Father, we come in Jesus' name asking that the presence and the power of your Holy Spirit Illuminate our hearts to accept and apply your word, your truth, and may we delight in your word this morning. We love and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, Today we come to uh, the holy vessel, which is called the brazen lava, or uh, the brazen uh, bronze basin, as we have just read. Uh, And it is uh, positioned uh, between the tent of meeting, uh, the tabernacle, the mishkan, uh, and in between the altar, the brazen altar. Uh, And so this is placed right in between. uh, And God wants us uh, to focus on on the basin, of, of washing today, I, I believe he has a, a very important message. How many of you uh, have experienced uh, maybe getting a little bit dirty, uh, a little bit grimy, uh, raise your hand, a little bit sweaty, raise your hand, a little bit smelly, uh, okay, and, okay, good, all of us have experienced that, whether you've been fishing or hunting or you've been outdoors for a long, long time where they did not have any showers available, and, uh, you know, uh, every time you breathe, it's, uh, not a pleasing aroma, but a stench from your own body. And you're like, when do we get to shower? You know, where, where's the cleanest water? No one really likes to be dirty. There's a general consensus in all of us that we like to be clean. Any one of us? Yeah, yes, clean. Uh, feel fresh and wash up nicely and smell good too. That's a bonus, right? Now, mind you, one thing I've learned in my almost 40 years of washing, I'm a professional washer, as, as you are. Uh, we wash a lot. Uh, I'm not particularly a germaphobe, but I just like to keep clean. So I wash my hands and wash my face and wash my feet a lot. Now, in my years of professional washing, I've learned that if you are clean, you smell good. Anyone understand that that concept? Whether you use a shampoo, conditioner, in a body wash, if you are clean, you smell good. Uh, And and for me, I I just like that uh, feeling of being fresh and clean. And I walk into a public uh, restroom, and my goal is not to touch anything with my hands. I'm not a germaphobe. It's just I I like to. Yeah, no. It's just uh, I like to keep things to myself, you know. Uh, And so my goal is to to try not to touch anything, right? Uh, and so I like to use the, the paper towel to, you know, get the water going and, and put that water towel there and it's waiting for me until I finish washing up and I pick that up and then I turn off the faucet and then I dry my hands and with the same paper towel, I go to the door and open it up and then I throw it in the trash. What a beautiful sight. No touching in the toilets, right? I mean, it just 
feeling of being, being clean is a good thing. We all understand that. Uh, hygiene is a good thing, not a bad thing at all. Now, <laughs> thank you, Tom. Uh, Tom's not a germaphobe. It's just like me. He likes to wash. He likes to wash. <laughs> now, the desire for cleaning and cleansing, it also translates not only in, on, on our bodies, but it translates to our belongings too. Some people enjoy washing their cars. Some people enjoy washing their boats and houses and their ponies and unicorns. Whatever you have, you like to wash it. You like to keep it clean. And, and that's a good thing too. That's a good thing too. Now, God uh, commands Moses to make a bronze basin for washing. This washing is a bronze lava, uh, and it was for Aaron and his sons to wash their hands and feet. Wash their hands and feet. A bronze lava is positioned, like I said before, uh, after the altar, just before the Mishkan, the tent of meeting, and it stands right in front of that door of going into the holy place before the priests would enter in, they would wash their hands and feet. And if they did not follow the commands of the Lord, it was death. That's how God had ordained it to be. Now, we think about this. Why did the priests need to wash with water? Why did they need to wash with water? Well, there are a couple of things that you need to understand. What did they do at the brazen altar? The priests were mostly in charge of killing the animals, sacrificing the animals, putting it on the altar, keeping the fire alive. They were what? Fire keepers, if you remember sermon from a couple of weeks ago. So there's a lot of things that go on, and it's hard, hard work. It's hard work putting all the animals in their rightful places, keeping the fire going, uh, and then, you know, telling the people, yeah, it's your turn, it's not your turn, and trying to get things going. So there's a lot of sweat, and it's very bloody, uh, and there's a lot of dirt and grime that would accumulate in, in the priest, right? So God, in his goodness and mercy, provides a, a washing place before the priest is to enter into the tent of meeting, a washing place. Now, the washing has two meanings. Number one, washing means to purify the person coming close to God, for God is holy and pure, so that it is for God. The washing is for God and for his good purposes. But the second meaning, a double meaning to washing, is to, for the priest to feel clean and to be refreshed. Imagine working all day and you come home and you wash up and you just sit down to have a nice meal with your family. There's nothing like it. I often say as I sit down with my family, this is heaven on earth where we get to enjoy. It's not that we have these extravagant meals, even if you have a loaf of bread or for us, a bowl of rice, you know, it's, it's a good thing because we can sit around the family and we love God and we love one another. So washing is for the priest to feel clean and to be refreshed. So the brazen altar speaks of salvation through the sin offering. And for us, that represents the cross. Jesus Christ, who became sin, who knew no sin, and he became the righteousness of all humanity by giving up his life on the cross for our sins. But what does the basin, the brazen lava, represent? It represents this, that even though you have been saved by the blood of the Lamb, there is an atmospheric sin that likes to come upon you. It's like dirt that you don't see, and it just sticks. And, um, you know, I, I'm not a landscaper, but, you know, I, I sometimes observe people who work outside, and at the beginning of the day, they, they're all freshened up, but at the end of the day, if they've been cutting grass all day or cutting trees all day, there's a certain amount of grime that builds up with sweat and, and you know, the added things. And, 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 and sometimes, and I've done this to myself, I kind of do this, and I get it on my... And I like to wash, so I go and wash up and wash my face, right? And washing is something that God wants us to do every single day. Brush your teeth, comb your hair, right? I mean, it does not bring about salvation, 
But because we live in a fallen world, there is that atmospheric sin that may stick. And so we go before the brazen lava to wash. Now, the title of today's message is this, God provided the water. God provided the water. Why? Because inside the brazen lava was what? Water. Let me remind you, the Israelites are going through the wilderness in the desert. Where do they find water? Anyone? I mean, did they have all of these apparatus to kind of get, get the H2O somehow? How did they get water? God provided it. Just like the fire was lit by God, the water was provided by God. God provides the means for them to wash. Our responsibility as the holy priesthood is to just come to the basin. Come to the basin and wash our hands and wash our feet. Yeah, but God, if you love me so much, can't you just automate that for me? No. God doesn't want us to be robots, right? And he wants us to willfully come to the basin to wash before we go in to the holy place. It's really important to understand that it is God who provides the water. Not only that, what about the material that is used for the brazen lava? What is the material? Well, it, it's basically copper. Uh, and in uh, Exodus 38, verse 8, we find where this comes from. They made the bronze basin and its bronze stand from the mirrors of the women who served at the entrance to the tent of meeting. There's not a lot talked about the women that served at the tent of meeting. Uh, there's a lot of ideas the Bible doesn't say, so we're not sure about it. But obviously, they carried a, a kind of a, a bronze mirror. Now, they didn't have glass like we have today or mirrors like we have today. So what they had to do with, with a piece of copper was to really, really polish it as best as they could, and they could vaguely see themselves on it. Uh, how many ladies today are carrying a, a mirror with you in your purse? Anyone? Oh, nowadays you don't need to do that because you've got your phones. So you kind of turn on your phone, turn on the camera. Okay, I, I look, right? So I guess everyone's carrying a mirror nowadays. Back in those days, they didn't have that. So they carried a copper, uh, you know, a piece of copper, a bronze, and they really, you know, tried to make it really, really smooth and try to see themselves. But what was very, very important to these women was to be able to see themselves so that they may be able to, um, you know, clean themselves or to make themselves beautiful. But when it came to giving to God, they were able to give these common materials to the Lord so that it became what? A holy vessel. A common thing that was used by the women who tended the gate of the tabernacle was given so that it would be made into a holy vessel. Do you see any connection maybe with us and how we give unto the Lord? I, I think we really need to think about this just for a moment. Some of us have such a, a low view of who we are that we say, I've got nothing to give to God. It has to be somebody else or, or whatnot. But unless we give of ourselves to him, we, we don't give him much to work with. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? But when we offer up our lives, offer up whatever we cherish, whatever we, we like, and we give it unto the Lord, he is able to make something common to something that is holy and sacred in usage for the kingdom of God. What could that be? What could that be in your life? And if we had time, we'd bring up people and have interviews and say, yeah, what do you think you have to offer to the Lord? Well, I like to bake cakes. Praise the Lord. So bake 10 cakes and give it to your neighbors and, and work for the kingdom like that. And it happens like that, right? Uh, some of us, you know, have different skill sets and giftings and something that is common in your eyes, but when it's given into the hands of the Savior, it becomes sacred and holy and pleasing to God. So none of us are exempt from serving the Lord. All of us are invited to that. I reminded us that we are all holy priests 
in 1 Peter 2, verse 1 to 5. Let me read for you. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We are God's holy priesthood. But pastor, you're the pastor. I'm not. Amen. The the Lord tells us in his word that all of us are his holy priesthood. Isn't that beautiful? So all of us must come to the brazen lava and wash up every day. Every day. So that we can meet him. That we can be refreshed. And that we would experience his holiness as we come closer and closer to him. I talked about, you know, the person that had common things and when it was gifted and, uh, and surrendered to the Lord that it was made holy. Uh, I, I want to share with you a story of a boy. This boy didn't attend school beyond the fifth grade. This boy could not spell. His grammar was really, really poor. His, his manners were really, really bad. Uh, he was known to be very crude. Uh, he's not me, by the way. It's, it's another person. Uh, he barely got by uh, working as a shoe salesman. But when God converted this boy towards being transformed and converted as a born-again Christian... This boy grew up to be a man that impacted the whole wide world, his name being D.L. Moody. He became an evangelist for Jesus and did mighty works for God that uh, reverberates to this day. One person, fully given to the service of God, made such an impact on history that There's education, theological education that continues to this day, and his revival sermons are encouraging pastors and laity, and so many things are going on just by one person being fully devoted to the works of the kingdom. Yeah, but pastor, what can somebody do with a fifth grade education? And and they, you know, this person didn't have good manners either. It's not about our judgment of where we are. It's about how God sees us in his truth and in his love and in his grace. One thing I notice about the brazen lava is that there are no uh, indications of make it five cubits wide and five cubits long and three cubits high. There are no dimensions in the word of God for the brazen lava, which I believe there is a spiritual meaning in it. Why? Why no dimensions? God wants us to see with our spiritual eyes that the sea of grace inside the brazen lava is immeasurable. The immeasurable grace which we come to willfully and wash ourselves makes us people who were common, maybe debilitated, maybe ostracized, maybe kicked down to the curb, whatever, God allows his immeasurable grace to wash us so that we step into a brand new destiny and there are people like D.L. Moody who has proved with his life that God can do that. Many a times our own thoughts limit what God can do in our lives. God can use Ross. God can use Rachel. God could use Bob and Jimmy over there, right? Not me. Because I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I don't have the strength. I don't have the education. I don't have the looks. I don't have the right kind of clothes. And what is all that? Excuses. <laughs> Excuses not to come into his immeasurable grace and be washed with the water that God 
provides. God does not call the equipped, but he equips the called. And I believe every single one in this room and on the live stream, you've been called to a greater purpose. It's just you don't know it yet. I had a breakfast with a dear brother this week, and we were talking, and it was a great time of fellowship, and, uh, and this brother posed a really important question of what's going to happen, like what's going to happen to my future, you know, and, and I'm thinking about this and, and that and this and that. Uh, Benny, is it okay if I share this story? I, I didn't have a chance to ask him. So... <laughs> It was Benny. Uh, <laughs> and we were talking, and it was great. And I was so blessed that, that Benny, my brother in Christ, uh, uh, just wanted to share this thing with me. And um, he also treated me to breakfast, so that was an added, added goodness there. Nonetheless, as we were talking, I'm listening, but also I, I always double listen. You know what that means? I listen to the person intently, but I double listen because I'm asking the Holy Spirit for wisdom because the problems that God gives me, I don't have the answers. Isn't that liberating? Now, don't think your pastor is dumb. I'm not dumb. It's just I, I like to listen to the person intently, but also ask the Holy Spirit for his wisdom and guidance. And then I just opened up my mouth. I just opened up my mouth and I said, Benny, I hear you. But let me tell you about my 22-year-old truck. My 22-year-old truck is a little bit broken right now. It goes, uh, but the mechanics can't find why the brake fluid is leaking. And we're on, we're on to it. We're trying to find it. And, uh, and, but if I take my broken truck to a different state or to a different country, it's still a broken truck. Because the problem is not in the situation or the surroundings. The problem is inside the truck that needs to get fixed. And again, this is all, I haven't even thought about this. I'm just opening up my mouth. Holy Spirit's leading the way. And then at the end of the meeting, I say this. This is my plan for my truck. I'm going to get it fixed. I'm going to find a mechanic that can fix it, and I'm going to fix it. And if I take it to Chicago or to Florida or to the Bermudas, it's still going to be a good running truck because the problem is not the environment it's inside of me and with that um, you know Benny and I we all rejoiced in the Lord uh, and said hallelujah God is good and we left and that conversation stayed with me throughout the day and it stayed with me until today and it's still going to stay with me because many of us want to go away from the brazen lava, come away from the tabernacle, and try to move away from the current situation and think everything's going to get solved. In other words, you want to escape God's presence, escape God's process of sanctification. You want to go in the other way, and you find yourself in a different situation. And yeah, being in a different atmosphere might give you a little bit of happiness or newness for a couple of days and a couple of weeks. But after a while, you find it's not the situation that was broken. It was inside of us all along. And therefore, we must come to the brazen lava, the immeasurable grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and let him wash us. Let him examine us. Let him read us. And that's where we come to the water and the brazen lava. The spiritual meaning is this. It's not only God's immeasurable grace. It is also the truth of God's word that must wash and cleanse us every single day. The word of God that cleanses us. The word of God that continues to nourish us and teach us the truth. The word of God that's like true north. Wherever you are, it's always pointing to the way of Jesus. It's always pointing to the righteousness of God. It's always pointing to the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And so we must wash ourselves every day with the word of God. So on one hand, it's the immeasurable grace that God provides in the water. But at the same time, it is the truth of God's word that washes us and refreshes us and makes us clean. 
What does James say in James 1, 19 to 25? Let me read for you. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. What does this mean? We need the word of God as a mirror for our souls and let God's word read us as we submit and read his word. And you might say, Pastor, it's so hard. I started the year good. I started with Genesis, and that was good. And then I went to Exodus, and it was fun. But at the end of Exodus into Leviticus, it became so boring. I don't know what's going on with my Bible reading. It's just words on a page. And to you, I would say, I hear you. I understand. I've been where you've been. But I would ask you to persevere and to be patient and to do the double listening that I did with Benny. As you are hearing and reading the word of God, you invite the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, you are the author of the word, and I want the author to commentate on what this really means. And even if I don't get it right now, Lord, I embrace it and I accept it because one day this word that I've chewed and kept in my heart is going to help me and grow me and sanctify me. This is good stuff. I'm going to store it in my heart. What does David say? How can a young man keep his ways pure? It is by what? Keeping God's word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Keeping God's word. Letting God's word read us. And that's why we're on a mission together to read the Bible together as a church family. How many of you are still on the plan? Okay, how many of you have thought about giving up the plan 32 times? Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> It's okay. If you've missed 32 days or 35, it's start today. Wherever you are on the plan, start today and continue to wash yourselves at the brazen lava with the immeasurable amount of God's grace that was provided through the water he gave, but also with the word of God that washes us and cleanses us. In Ephesians 5, Paul writes to the church in Ephesus. And this is in context of marriage, but in verse 26 of chapter 5, he says this, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. The word of God cleanses us. Anyone feel dirty, grimy, smelly, sticky? Well, Today you found out where you need to go. Because all of you, I believe, have come through the brazen altar. The blood of Jesus has cleansed you through and through. So you've been saved by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. But the next step before we enter into the Mishkan, the tabernacle, is to wash at the basin, the brazen lava. And to understand God did not give measurements for this because he wants you to experience his immeasurable grace. Say that with me. Immeasurable grace. That means you cannot measure it. There is no dimensions for it. In Solomon's temple, when he builds the temple for the Lord, the lava, because there's no specific directions, he builds 10 of them around the temple. Maybe for us. Instead of having so many Bibles that are collecting dust, maybe you position one Bible at your kitchen table and you position another of your Bibles in your bathroom. And again, there's nothing wrong with putting your Bible in your bathroom, okay? It's just our sign of our love for him and we want to be close to his. And you place another Bible at your work desk 
And everywhere you go, you see the word of God. And every time you see the Bible, you remember, oh, I need to get washed up. I need to get washed up. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lather me up with your soap, oh, Lord. And with your water, cleanse me through and through. I want to feel refreshed again. If you feel spiritually grimy and smelly and sticky and sweaty, we come to the word of God and wash. Next week, we'll visit the New Testament where Jesus washes the feet of his disciples. And we'll find a wonderful character by the name of Peter who who wants to be washed up so good, but Jesus says, hold on. But that's for next week. (laughs) Remember this. God is the one who wants to refresh you and sanctify you through and through so that you would have that intimacy with him in the holy place, in the holy of holies, with him together. Why? At the end of the day, it's not the environment that's broken. It's me. I need that healing. I need to be fixed up. And sometimes I don't know what's wrong with me. So I come to the doctor, Jesus Christ, the lover of my soul, who tells me and shows me his truth. For the word became flesh and tabernacled among us. He became our neighbor. And he is our Lord and Savior. And he is mighty to save us. Will you trust him today? Will you come willfully to the basin and wash in his grace and in his word? This is an open invitation. You can come to him. You can come to him. Don't worry. Don't run away. Don't escape. And for those who are professional escapers, let me just give you a word to the wise. So last time you escaped, how did that turn out for you? You wanted to escape again, didn't you? So you escaped from here to here. Then after a while... Something's not right. So you escape again to a different place and to a different place, to a different place. But today, God is inviting you back in to right relationship with him. What a joy we have. What a wonderful, merciful savior we serve. And we embrace his invitation and say yes to his ways. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, you are so faithful to us. And even through one holy vessel, there's so much spiritual meaning that we're just in awe of who you are and what you're doing among us. We thank you for the many men and women of God who have served you so faithfully, given up everything to serve you. And we stand upon their shoulders today, and we ask in Jesus' name that you would help us to be those people of full surrender, coming to the brazen lava and washing with your grace, with your word. Oh, how marvelous. Oh, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. And thank you, Jesus, that you not only died for me and rose from the dead, but you are coming back for me and for us. So we will not escape the situation, O Lord. We will stay put at the brazen lava. We will continue to wash up with your grace and with your word. And Lord, as you cleanse us through and through, Thank you for inviting us in to the holy place. We worship you and we honor you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.